Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. In our today's video, we are going to try and understand a most controversial as well as equally important topic for the practice that is miasms. In this video, we will try and learn in detail about the Soric miasm and how its understanding has developed over the history of homeopathy. So let's begin. First, let's try and understand what is miasm and how did it develop. So Dr. Hahnemann was having a great practice since he developed the law of similars from 1790 to 1820. But during his practice, he found that most of the chronic diseases were getting relief, but the symptoms would relapse even after closely administering a perfect similimum. He then dedicated around 12 years of his life to find out the cause for it and somewhere found that there is something which doesn't allow the diseases to get cured completely and this he named as miasm which means noxious influences. During these 12 years, he found that miasms are basically of two types, venereal and non-venereal. Now, venereal are those miasms or those noxious influences which spread by sexual contact and the non-venereal are the ones which spread by different means other than the sexual contact. So, Hahnemann found that majority of the chronic diseases arise from non-venereal miasm that is Sora and hence he also called it as a hydra-headed monster that is a multiple-headed monster or a snake. If Sora is such a serious miasm, it is our duty to understand it in detail. So first let's try and understand what is Soric miasm according to Dr. Hahnemann. Sora is derived from the word Sorak which means a groove, a fault or a pollution. But Dr. Hahnemann defined Sora as an original disease condition or an infection of the whole organism which is manifested by peculiar cutaneous or skin eruptions which is accompanied by intense intolerable voluptuous itching which under diverse circumstances affects the various organs and tissues of the body which causes a variety of other disease conditions. So basically Hahnemann considered Sora to be an infection which only is the oldest and the most universal and the most dangerous condition which is the origin to all the other various disease conditions and thus he considered to be Sora to be the mother of all the miasms and all the other various diseases. Since Master Hahnemann considers it as an infection, he also gives the way or the mode of its uh, spread of its infection. So let's try and understand it in detail. So according to Hahnemann, each vesicle is the most primitive expression of the soric miasm. The fluid secretions which are present in this vesicle contains the root of soric miasm. So he says that whenever the person is born or even when he is in the womb of the mother, he gets infected with sora as a miasm which is transmitted from his or her mother itself. Even if he somehow doesn't catch the infection in the womb, he acquires it immediately after the birth from various other sources. The nerve which was first sensitized by the soric miasm transmits it to the rest of the body by the means of nervous transmission and it then infects the entire organism slowly and continuously. Once after around 7, 10 or even 14 days, it completes infecting the internal organism entirely. It shows the first primary eruptions that is each vesicles externally which is accompanied by intolerable voluptuous itching. Voluptuous means a type of itching where the patient feels better after doing itching, where scratching or rubbing it only helps and gives relief. This violent rubbing breaks the vesicle and releases the infectious material and thus it in turn infects the other people too. But then how does Sora cause a variety of other health conditions? Till the itch vesicle is present on the skin surface, it is considered to be the safe for the person. But when it is treated by some local application, it disappears and drives the miasm internally and creates either latent sora or secondary symptoms of sora. Now, what is latent sora? When the disease is driven inwards, if the person is in the state of health, both physically as well as mentally, it doesn't cause any secondary symptoms of the sora. And in this state, the sora remains dormant and in a quiet phase which is known as latent sora. But when the state of health is disturbed by some exciting cause, the soric miasm then affects the weakest organ of the body and causes secondary symptoms of sora in that organ. Thus, Master Hahnemann considers sora to be just a primary and an infectious cause of disease. After Hahnemann, several other authors like Roberts, Kent, Herring and contemporary authors like Vitalkas, Sankaran and Vijekar have given their understanding of sora. 
it is important to understand their views too to form a concrete and an easy understanding of sora so next let's try and understand dr robert's views on sora now dr robert was a strong believer in dr browning osen's philosophy and his work while he was studying myasms and in specific soric myasm he tried to study it by linking it with the repertory of antisoric remedies written by dr browning osen now the repertory of antisoric said around 50 remedies out of which 33 remedies were from the mineral kingdom and out of them around 30 were prepared from the elements making up the human body like hydrogen lithium carbon oxygen sodium potassium magnesium silicon arsenic bromine etc thus in properly balanced conditions according to dr roberts the deficiency of these elements in pure or compound form gives rise to the symptoms of soric myasm but the deficiency in this system is not caused due to starvation or deficiency of those elements in the diet while it is caused due to the failure of the body to absorb and assimilate those elements so this if deficiency of these elements in turn affects the functioning of different organs of the body and disturbs it which in turn causes various symptoms of the soric myasm thus according to dr roberts symptomatology of soric myasm includes various functional disturbances with a variety of sensations on physical as well as mental level caused by the deficiency of various elements making up the human body resulting from some emotional disturbances or causes thus to sum up according to dr robert sora is nothing but the deficiency so after dr robert dr kent has expressed his views on soric myasm up to dr kent the myasms were explained more on a physical level but he was the first one to explain myasms on a mental and a spiritual level so dr kent has always considered man to be a combination of thinking will and actions both at mental and spiritual level thus while explaining his views on myasms he says that myasm begins when there is a fault or a pollution in the thinking of the person he says till the man has right thinking and thinks rightly and righteously about the good and justice for others it is not possible for the man to get disease but when the thinking of the man gets polluted or evil and starts thinking bad or malicious for others the the seeds for sora or the seeds for disease is sowed he says nothing but the development of soric myasm takes place exactly due to the thing, pollution of the thinking so this soric myasm slowly then goes past from one generation to another and the pollute and pollutes the entire human race and then starts expressing it on the body through a wide range of symptoms ranging from simple itch over the body up to the complex forms of diseases like asthma diabetes or epilepsy etc thus according to dr kent sora is a corrupt or a polluted thinking so now that we have established some understanding of sora on the basis of understanding of various pioneers let's understand the views of recent stalwarts on soric myasm so first let's begin with the views of dr m l dhavle on soric myasm according to mld sir sora is nothing but and is characterized by hypersensitivity and hyperreactivity to various internal and external environmental stimuli so this hypersensitivity and hyperreactivity is seen first at the level of pne axis that is psycho neuroendocrine axis so what is pne axis pne axis is nothing but the mechanism of the body where first the mind reacts to a certain stimulus and in turn activates the nervous system and the endocrine system to act accordingly so a hyperreactive and a hypersensitive mind or a pne axis always keeps the body alert and active at all the levels both mental as well as physical which gives rise to a variety of symptomatology but according to him uh, since sora is the beginning of any miasmatic process or development of the system uh, still has the adequate resources to heal or return back to normalcy this means that still the body has a lot of hope to return back to normal but till the system tries to get back to normalcy soric hypersensitivity or hyperreactivity creates various symptoms at mental as well as physical level at the intellectual level hypersensitivity leads to quick sensory perceptions and heightened memory or clairvoyance or quick responses etc while at the emotional level it produces all the basic emotions of a person like anger sadness love hate jealousy etc but these symptoms always arise out of a strong wish to fulfill their desires and ending with a guilt at the physical level it creates symptoms on the skin and mucous membranes 
in terms of some rashes, itch or urtic area etc. and on the inflammation of mucous membranes. But when these primary expressions go suppressed, it then causes internalization of the disease and then it affects the most weakest organ of the body and progresses to the destruction through phases of psychosis, tubercular and syphilitic miasms. Thus, for MLD sir, SORA is nothing but the hypersensitivity and hyperreactivity of the body at all the levels of the body. So, after MLD sir, now let's proceed to the views of Dr. Rajan Sankaran on SORIC miasm. Now, to study miasms, Dr. Rajan Shankaran studied the most well-known remedies of those miasms in terms of various mental states and delusions which are found in these remedies to derive a specific theme and then extended it to the physical and pathological planes. So, for understanding Sora, he studied remedies like Sorainam and Sulphur and derived a common theme of hope and optimism in Sora. So, according to Shankaran sir, Soric mental state is marked by a hope where he feels that if he struggles to get out of a crisis, he can easily get out of it. So if the struggle is successful, it is okay and if failed, it causes a lack of self-confidence or despair. But with a still lot of hope to get out of it and struggle once again. Thus on a physical level too, soric miasm produces functional pathologies where there is always a hope to get cure. To sum up, according to Dr. Sankaran, Sora is a hopeful struggle on mental and physical plane. So, to sum up the entire video, we have seen how the understanding of Sora has evolved from the Hanumanian times where it was just considered to be a primary infectious cause of the disease to the recent times where Sora is understood both on mental and physical planes. Few authors like Dr. Phyllis Pite have tried to classify symptoms in a particular miasm. For example, urticaria is always soric, etc. But we believe that this approach might mislead in the practice and thus we have tried to explain the philosophy behind the soric miasm in an evolutionary manner. Hope you guys have liked and understood the video. If yes then show it to us by liking the video and subscribing to our channel and commenting your valuable feedback in the comment section below.